Before we come to the panel, since we are talking about IWR 2022, uh, Inger has already highlighted some of the findings. Uh, but just to give you the idea of what this report is all about, uh, this is a 300-page report. Thank you. Thanks. 300-page reports and uh, with 25 figures around 72 tables, appendices, deep dive into the data, the assets and production boundaries, and then can estimate the, what Inger mentioned, manufactured or produced capital, natural capital, and human capital for 163 countries for 1992 to 2019. 2019, it is a little late, but the data was available only for that year where we can compare all the countries, 163. And that's why uh, this was the uh, markup point. The data is all from the UN sources. Somewhere, World Bank and other sources have also been referred to. Now, uh, so uh, inclusive wealth is basically an idea to strengthen wherever GDP has the limitations. Uh, just to, and of course we have to hear more you know, from the panelists, give you five findings in five minutes. Can we go to the next slide, please? So finding number one. So this is 1992 to 2092. Two things. Uh, as executive director UNEP mentioned, natural capital is on decline for that period. That is in black and white. Second, the rate of growth of GDP is much higher than the rate of growth of inclusive wealth. What does it tell us? That we are blurring the boundary of income and wealth. And long back, the person who gave this idea, late Simon Kuznets, had warned us Mixing income with wealth is a very bad economics. That is what we are doing if we are not accounting for depreciation or depletion of natural capital. And that is very clear from this report that we are mixing income and wealth for sustainability. It's a bad economics. Next. In many parts of the world, we are consuming beyond our means. So that means that in rate of growth of inclusive wealth per capita is less than one. We are not growing, and you can see the, 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 the gray area. Unfortunately, many countries who are consuming beyond their means are in the south. That is what the data is just speaking. We are not saying anything. This is the data. And that we have to remember that, that, that if we recognize inclusive wealth as a supplement to ongoing GDP or as a measure to implement beyond GDP, it will be helpful. Third slide, please. Okay, this is, uh, mm, many of you have been working in climate change. Rise in temperature has adverse impact on the resilience and condition of natural capital. In fact, on the y-axis left, it is natural capital, and then on this side, right-hand side, it is CO2 damages, I mean CO2 rise, and you can see that as the temperature rise, there is a decline in natural capital. So climate change induces decline and depletion of natural capital, and that, once again, this report proves that the biodiversity and nature are not the, this, this, this junked concept from the climate change. They are interrelated. So the data for 1992 to 2013 on climate change and the natural capital also confirms that. Again, uh, one clarification, which since uh, this is being live, uh, you know, live broadcast and live, 
we, when we are measuring natural capital, it is not the market price. It is the accounting price or the shadow price because market price does not capture meaning of the side or adverse impact, what economists call externality. So in this case, we are using accounting price and that should be helpful. Can we go to the next slide, please? This is, this is interesting. The inequality in wealth and inequality in natural capital, they are correlated. Once again, the depletion of natural capital or decline in natural capital induces economic inequality through inequality of inclusive wealth. We all know there are many ways to measure economic inequality, whether it is Gini coefficient or public wealth ratio, 2020 ratio, and so on and so forth. By all criteria, it has been found for the data that natural capital declining means more inequality in society, in economic system. And here, one more very powerful reason to invest in restoration and halt the decline of natural capital. This will have very good impact or favorable impact on inequality. Next, please. So what we do about it? Certainly, this is a global data. We need to do it more at the country level. And so we need to pilot beyond GDP inclusive wealth in selected countries to come out more powerful and comparing, compelling insights. Second, we, we must, I mean, that is what we have been talking, invest in sustainable natural capital management for reducing economic inequality. This is a powerful message. One more reason uh, that you can see the synergy between management of natural capital and reducing economic inequality and opportunities, which unfortunately has gone up in post-pandemic arena. Uh, third, develop a strong community of practitioners. That is where the challenge is because we are also working in the countries and the country needs to be supported through the, uh, through, through, through the capacity in data, in methodology, in exchange of lessons learned across the countries. Those are the things will happen if we have a strong community of practitioners who can really give a sanitized version, a simpler, cleaner version of how to implement inclusive wealth and be one GDP. Of course, engagement with financial institution, Inger mentioned uh, the treasury and development, that if we bring wealth in place of GDP, how the lending changes, how the borrowing changes, how the, the project evaluation changes, these are how, how monetary policy can recognize, how the bank rate can recognize this, how the management of sovereign wealth funds can recognize, that is the next course that we have to see and how it helps. There are literature, there are scientists who are saying that bringing wealth into the picture will certainly help even the business firms and corporations. And of course, we have to design a range of fiscal and monetary policies, trade and investment based on inclusive wealth. That should be the way forward. So that is what a group of authors who have been drawn from different parts of the world, geographically and gender-wise balanced, they, are, they all are the acknowledged experts of the discipline from ecology and economics. That is what they have uh, come out with. So I am presenting this on their behalf. I will stop here and would invite uh, Dominic Sharon to, to moderate the next panel discussion. Dominic, please.